Hello fellow Sudokans, welcome to Zen and the Art of the Guardian Sudoku Puzzle. It's Friday the 2nd of January 2026, I almost did it, uh, and I hope you are keeping well. I should be playing the Guardian's hard level Sudoku Puzzle for today in just a mo. Um, one of the great things about the internet, and in particular YouTube I suppose as well, is that we get a chance to view stuff in full. Uh, one of the problems about modern life is that there is so much information to consume and we don't seem to have enough time to consume all of it. But you um, can often find more detailed things on the internet uh, which will give you a chance to examine stuff for yourself as opposed to taking people's opinions on it, which unfortunately uh, we get a lot of, <laughs> and including my opinion on here, right? <laughs> I guess. Um, I try to uh, not say too much. I give you my opinions, my thoughts for the day, but I would also encourage everybody to go and see the original thing themselves of whatever I'm talking about and on a particular day. And uh, it's still very early in the morning here. Um, and uh, I woke up super early this morning. I couldn't sleep. Uh, or I woke up early, I should say. And uh, decided to switch on YouTube as a way to distract myself. And uh, a couple of things came on. Came on. Um, one, first of all, is uh, the the full video for. I think it's the full video for um, uh, Jack Smith's deposition. Uh, now, as a non-U.S. citizen. Uh, you may be wondering why I'm interested in it. Well, I think it just is interesting to see how things are developing there. And I wondered why the Republicans kind of, uh, or what they were going to do, what tech tactics they were going to use. And so I watched, I've watched about an hour and a half of it. But I wanted to say what a brilliant man Jack Smith is. Uh, and I say this because the way that he answered questions. Okay, now he's a prosecutor, right? So his main focus in life is asking questions really you know to find out the answers if you're a prosecutor you are the person who is asking the questions not necessarily the person answering the questions so there are people who are good at one and not good at the other for example Kamala Harris I think is a really excellent prosecutor um, when she was doing the I can't remember the committee um uh, when she was asking questions on a committee, I can't remember now, I watched her as a prosecutor. This was well before she was uh, mooted as a, a, a candidate for vice president. Um, she was a senator, I think. Uh, and her questioning was excellent. Re she was really good. Her, asking her, qu uh, qu ask, uh, uh, <laughs> her questioning was excellent. The questions were well formed and they made sense and they were, you know, designed to elicit a good response, a good response. But I think at, when she was answering questions, when she was presidential candidate, she didn't do a good job. Uh, I don't think she was a great candidate. And uh, even though, of course, she's a million times better than Trump, that's not the point. I don't think she was very good at. What, uh, answering questions um, in the in the best way. Now, if you contrast that with Jack Smith, who is answering questions very efficiently, directly, and brilliantly, and absolutely on point, and absolutely, I'm not going to say defensively, but you know, defending his positions in exactly the right way, in a in in perfect legal la legal language, but not in terminology that makes it so, uh, ob you know, uh, um, obscure that it's, uh, non uh, lawyers can't understand it. Uh, it was brilliant, and he did a, a, an excellent job in, in what in the hour. And I, I haven't seen. I think it's eight hours or something like that. I've seen about an hour and a half. And in that time, I thought he was really, really good. And I'll try to watch some more. As I say, we'll try to watch these things in full but because we can and we can make our own opinions, our own judgments on things as opposed to uh, listening to opinion makers, which I think is a, not a good thing. You know, sometimes, you know, I, I used to recommend Midas Touch channel on this here, but, I, but I've stopped that. A lot of what they do is clickbait. And, you know, I've like seen, clicked on some of their videos recently. It says, you know, Trump melts down in this. And, and actually, when they've shown the, 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 the clips, I've thought, well, OK, that was not too bad. It was just Trump trying to be funny. He's not very funny, but, you know, he's trying to be humorous in his own way. 
And that's not particularly scandalous or anything like that, but they've tried to make a lot out of it. So I dislike this kind of, uh, this kind of stuff, sensationalism, I think. Um, so uh, I would recommend that you watch that. It's on YouTube, I guess, if you've got eight hours to spare. <laughs> you don't have to watch it in one go. As I said, I've only watched an hour and a half. I t intend to go back in and dip in and out of it as and when time allows. But that wasn't the only thing that I watched this morning. I also watched the inauguration speech from Zoran Mamdani in New York. And that may have influenced my breakfast choice because um, I've just had pizza for breakfast <laughs> and, uh, admit, admittedly only frozen pizza that I cook myself uh, from you know like in the oven uh, but uh, I have a feeling that that, that affected my <laughs> his uh, speech must have affected uh, my breakfast choice either that or the fact that I've only been able to get noodles for the last couple of days now he has made a, 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 he made a brilliant speech as an inauguration speech uh, again communicating with the public in a way that is easy to understand uh, on a level that they can deal with but not dumb and uh, not um, well not dumbed down to the point where it's uh, you know it's, uh, just ridiculous uh, but it's I, I think it's great and he again um, defended his own positions and has promised stuff and he has said that he will not kind of um, uh, bow down to uh, oligarchs and stuff like that, but also that he will try as his best to uh, uh, maintain a radical position. Not, you know, a lot of politicians when they do this kind of thing, they win and then they say, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna you know, rule for everybody," which he did say. But I mean, he he kind of uh, intimated that he wouldn't be uh, um, afraid of taking on oligarchs and powerful people in New York. So I would also recommend that speech as something you should. Uh, watch on YouTube. There we are, YouTube. YouTube, do me a favor. I'm all, always saying good things about you, YouTube. Why don't you big up the algorithm a little bit and try to get me out to a few more people rather than the half dozen that I know come here daily. <laughs> anyway, I think it affected my breakfast choice. I've had pizza and coffee, or maybe I should, I'm just finishing off my coffee. I should call it coffee yeah, to, in honor of New York. And that's the end of my breakfast. Let's get on with our game of Sudoku, shall we? We're well into 2026 already. It's already two days in. We've got one blocking down here like this. We've got one blocking this square here. So in the bottom row, we're going to put one there. We've got seven blocking this square here. So in the bottom row, we're going to put seven there. And we're going to finish off this bottom row with a digit three. And that's it. We can now relax. No? Okay, we've got a bit more to do. Okay, let's go on then. We've got ones blocking up here, up here, across there and there. That will give us a one in that square there. Six is blocking down these couple of columns here. will give us a six there. Six blocking all the way across. Here's a six. Missing numbers, two, three, four. So two blocking across there then and two blocking down there. That will give us two in that square. How about threes? Oh yeah, so three in one of these two squares blocking across. That will give us the three there. <laughs> It worked out nicely then. And also I've got two and three I can see very close together. So that's going to put two and three up there. Uh, we'll, we'll deal with that later, I think. Let's just see this easier stuff at the bottom first. Two, three, what else did I say? Four. So this is going to be four and five, is it? Is that right? And this is going to be one. So we got one blocking down here. There's our one. This is four and five. And so this is going to be eight. <coughs> Seems to check out. So missing digits on this side are five, seven, nine. No pairs up here for us to say which is the third. And we can put in immediately, but never mind. Let's just keep going. 
Uh, so we're going to have to move up a little bit, I guess. Oh, let's have a look at this two and three. So two and three over here. So we've got two and three in those squares there. It means that these are not two or three. They must be five, six, eight. So six is there, there, eights across there. Five's unsure. In the middle, nine blocks here and nine blocks there. So that's a nine. And at the ends, we're going to have one and eight. So we've got the eight blocking here. That'll give us eight over here. One in this square. One block across here, one up here, one down there. That's the final digit one already. What's next on the agenda? Three blocking across here and three up here will give us three in that square. Three blocking this one, this one, this one, this one and this one in the top row. So the only cell that's available for a three is that square there. Three then blocking down here, down there. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Four blocks down here, there's a four. Missing digit here is two. Uh, I believe we're looking for six, seven, and eight here. Am I right? I think so. And we've got six and seven conveniently together. So that would be the eight. We have four blocking up here and up here and across there. So that's a four. <coughs> we have four blocking this square and four blocking this square. So in this column, there's our four missing digits here. Three, five, is that right? Yeah, three, five. So these are not three, five. They are four, seven, nine. So sevens there and there, fours there or there. Ah, nine, first of all, nine blocks across there, so that's our nine. Okay, and then seven blocking up here, so that's the seven. And then four was the other number, wasn't it? <clears throat> four then blocking to the bottom, here's a four, this is five. Last number to place there, nine. Missing numbers in the top row, five, six, and eight. We've got five and eight. Can it be five? No. Can it be eight? No. Must be six then. <clears throat> now, I did work out that that was two and three, didn't I? Yeah, two, three, two, three. All right, and we know that this is going to be five and eight. And so this is none of those, which makes it a six. Five blocks up here and up here, so that'll give us five in that square. Five blocking across here, there's the five, there's the whatever, three. Three across here and across there, there's our three. And of course we have the twos, or sorry, two blocking across there, there we go. Two, just reminding you. I know you knew that already, but uh, this is our nine. <coughs> Missing numbers there, and there are two and something. So the two blocking up here will say you're the two, and you are the seven, which is the last remaining digit there. Seven down and up, or just look for the missing square or missing digit in that column, and that's a seven. There's one also one missing here that is th not three, that is six, I think. 
So six across here, six down here, six up there. It's been this game is definitely easier than yesterday's Guardian, which had a bit of a sting in the tail, I think. <coughs> this one doesn't appear to be possible to have a sting in the tail at this stage. Uh, all right, what's finished? One, three, and six are finished. So let's just click on the numbers that we need and see what I can do. Can I do twos? No. Can I do fours? Yes. Four across here, four down here, four up there. <coughs> That's a four. That's the end of digit four. Can we do fives? Uh, not sure how. Can we do sevens? Yes, seven blocking across here, seven down there. There's our seven. And seven down here and down there. There is our seven. That's the end of seven. Can we do eight? Well, let's just put this missing number in there first. That's a five. And five blocks across here. There's the five. And the missing number here is a two. And so we go back with the two swing like a pendulum do and this will be uh, eight and eight blocks across there there's the eight this will be a nine what was that song something swings like a pendulum do <laughs> I can't even remember what the lyrics were nine there England England swings like a pendulum do. Maybe we're talking about the political system. I have no idea what the song was about. <laughs> five up. There's a five. And this will be an eight, I think. There we go. Not too tough. Uh, that's our hard level. Saturday tomorrow, their expert level puzzle. Sometimes tough, some very often not so tough. But we'll find out tomorrow, I guess. I will be back later with some more Sudoku. Uh, will I have a morning nap? I hope so. Should go back to sleep. I'll let my breakfast um, digest. Take care. Bye bye.